Hey guys, Reno Zero, how you doing? I hope all is well in YouTube land. <laughs> Whatever part of the world that you are in, in our part of the world, uh, we are doing a, uh, I figured we'd do a typical um, summertime day for us. Uh, back in the wintertime, we did a, a typical winter work day where we uh, worked some hides and, and did some other stuff that we do normally through the wintertime. Today, we're gonna do uh, kind of the same thing as, uh, as far as the summertime goes. Uh, it is just after sunrise, uh, and it is June of 2nd or 1st or Saturday or Tuesday. I, I don't know what day it is, uh, because I just it doesn't matter what day it is. It just really doesn't change our day-to-day. -day. So a couple of things that we have on our to-do list today that we're going to do is we have to make a bait fish delivery, um, and then we're going to, to turn these. I was just show here. Here in our freezer, we've got bait fish that we catch and sell. Uh, so we're going to take these and turn them into some cash money. And then we are going to use that cash money to buy some... Uh, oops, sorry about my hand there. I'm using this little GoPro camera and I'm still not really all that used to it. But and then we're going to use this uh, money that we make from selling the fish to buy some feed for our critters. We've got a little bit of work to do in the garden. Uh, we got to check on our critters, of course. We've already done a little bit of that this morning. Anybody that knows me knows my days start pretty early, usually uh, right before daylight or before. And in the summertime, uh, that's right around 5 or so in the morning uh, is when I get up and start getting around. And then we'll go in the morning time, and then during the heat of the day, uh, usually around 1, depending on the time of year, we'll come in, I'll come back into the house, and maybe have a siesta and rest for a little bit till 3, 30, 4 o'clock when the sun starts going down over the hill and is less strong. And then we'll keep going to until uh, the daylight ends. So we'll try to take some clips uh, throughout the course of the day here and there of some things that's going on in, in one of our typical days. And uh, we'll go from there. Hopefully it's not going to be boring as crap. But I get a lot of questions all the time on what we do and how we live, how we make money. And uh, there's just there's so many different ways that you can do it. Oh, and we've got, I'm doing a, a nuisance a raccoon trapping job uh, for a guy in town uh, who has an appliance store. And uh, hopefully I can trade the job that I'm doing there, the trapping job, for a refrigerator that another one of my friends needs. So I get that refrigerator and either turn it into some cash money or trade it to him for something else that I need. Uh, so there's just all different ways, you know, whether you're trapping or raising your critters. We got rabbits having babies right now. We'll go check on them here directly. Uh, that's an income stream. Of course, our chickens and our eggs and our pheasants. We got pheasant eggs in the incubator. We'll check on them. It's all, and it, think of your income as a river. You know, you may start with, say, your eggs and your chickens at the top, and it's got a little bitty, little bitty river at the top, and then you add in trapping and furs and fishing and pheasants and hogs and everything else you add in like little streams and tributaries going into the river and then by the time the river gets to the gulf of mexico like the mississippi it's a big river so there's all kind of different little things add up over the course of the entire year so anyway enough about that uh, i'm gonna grab my coffee we're gonna load up these fish into a big cooler these are frozen skipjack uh, they are excellent catfish cut bait and there's a couple of tackle shops that i sell them to here in our local area and, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. If anybody knows of any other tackle shops that would be interested in selling Skipjack, uh, let me know. Uh, I can hook them up because uh, this is what, one of the things that I do in the summertime to, uh, to provide. So, anywho, let's go check on some, uh, some baby bunnies. And then uh, we'll probably start getting things loaded up in the truck. And we'll just take some clips here and there. So, we'll see you in a bit. Good morning, pork chop. What are you doing, pretty girl? <laughs> We'll uh, get her down and give her a scratching and a little bit of uh, greens here in a minute. Looks like she's uh, she's still needing her coffee, it looks like. She's uh, kind of lounging up there. And a couple of the girls. I don't know how well this camera will pick up or not. But there's one of our newest cats. He just showed up uh, about a month ago. Hi, ah, buddy. But we needed a new outside cat to replace our boots cat. So uh, we named him Larry. Hi, Larry boy. Which is short for Lawrence Johannes von Cuddlestein III. Huh. The 17th Earl of Cute, aren't you? He's a pretty small cat, but uh, so far he's been doing really good at catching mice and stuff out of the, the shed and the feed barn. Oh, my goodness. So he's going to be a keeper. All right. Let's go up here and check on the, uh, on the bunnies. 
There's our salad box. It looks really good. The garden is looking pretty good. Need to do some weeding in there. But uh, that's what we're going to do a little bit later. We got the rabbit tractor out there with rabbits in it. But anyway, let's get in here and check on these little ones. There's some of our little babies that are a couple of weeks. And these here are the new ones. Where are the mamas? You doing good mama girl? Yeah. Let's see if we can get in there where you can see them. See if you can move them around. Those were just born last night and yesterday evening. I think she only had three, but these are mini Rexes. And uh, it's not uh, it's not unusual for them to only have a, you know, a smaller litter, which is okay with us. We got, and we got this little bitty chocolate dough down here. She's a cutie pie. And she's got in here some uh, some little ones as well. What you doing, bun buns? Don't know how well they're going to show up or not in the light here. But, yeah, they're cute. Yeah, they're cuddly. What you doing, mamas? Oh, my goodness. Freaking out. They're cute. They're cuddly. Uh, but for us, like I say, uh, we look in the nest box, and a lot of times we can see some dollar signs. Hi, girly. What are you doing in there? Making up your nest? You getting ready to? Hope so. So anyway, like I said, these are just some of our uh, part of the rabbitry. This is the mini Rex rabbitry. What you doing in there, bun buns? Hi, bunners. And uh, here, come out here. Let's come out here. Let the people see how cute you are. Come on. Oh my goodness. Look at you, little buns. <laughs> anyway, the well, uh, Go check on the uh, the uh, bigger rabbits, the uh, the standard Rex and the meat rabbits. We'll check on them later, and uh, we'll just turn the camera on periodically as we as we go around. In between, we need to we need to hold these weeds down in here. We was hoping that burning would kill a lot of the weed seeds, and it probably did. But this is our tomato and pepper garden, and uh, they're, they're looking healthy and happy so far. Some of our little okra plants. I don't know if you'll be able to see them or not, but we need to weed around them. We've had some crazy weather this spring. It's been wet and uh, muddy, so these are cucumbers. Got to make some more bread and butter pickles because uh, my buddy Ricky Wallace is going to claim all of my pickles that I made for himself. <laughs> so, yes, I know my fruit trees need pruned. Somebody said you need to prune your trees. Yeah, I understand. I know that. Uh, and we will get to it after they put their fruit on. And in the, uh, the early winter, I think we're going to prune them. But I've got to do a little bit more research and a little more learning about fruit trees. Uh, before we do that, what are you doing, buns? Here's is one of our rabbit tractors. You can see we're moving around. What are you doing, Mama? We've got uh, Mama and her litter of babies in here growing out. We moved them around the orchard. And uh, this is what the uh, the grass will look like. We'll move it around, and it'll re the grass will recover uh, in a couple of days. It'll pop back up, but we move them around uh, all around the, the fruit trees and all around the yard. Uh, this is what, uh, if you leave them there for a day and then you move them, this is what it looks like underneath it. You don't know how well you're going to be able to see, but the grass is mowed and there's a lot of little droplets around. And uh, when I get back from the river, we'll probably move these little dudes again, move them back over this way, this little patch of clover. It's healthy and it saves money on food. They got space to run around and uh, it's a good thing. I like it. We got another tractor that I got to do some repairs on. And then we will have the other mama doe and her babies out here in the grow out pen too. Look at that. Peaches. Woo. Man alive. We've been waiting in almost five years to get some fruit. And now we got some. And I am extremely happy. Can't wait to eat a fresh peach and a fresh apple. How you doing, Larry? What are you doing? All right. Let's uh, go load up some fish now. Actually, I gotta go check on pork chop real quick. Come on, baby. Oh, there's my sweet little piggy. Oh, my sweet little princess piggy. You, she's my sweetie. You want a little breakfast snack? Huh? You want some salad? Oh, some salad to maintain your girlish figure. Huh? We do this a couple times a day. Give her some dock leaves, and this is some dandelion, a little bit of plantain, and uh, there's even a little bit of young 
young thistle in there. Give her some good vitamins uh, and some good greens. And of course, we got to give her a scratching on the head. Huh. But she is very docile. She is a really, really good hog. She's my baby girl. We've had her since she was a little bitty. I don't know if you guys have been around the channel for a while. Remember when she was a little bitty? I'd say she's probably 500, 550 now pounds. Hi, huh, sweetie. Do you drink of water now? Wash it down. Uh, somebody asked what kind of breed she was. She is a Hampshire Poland China cross. So uh, she's going over to the, the water trough and getting a drink. But she's a very good hog. Uh, I, I really enjoy this breed. I like the breed because she's uh, longer from the uh, the Hampshire breed is a long breed of hog. So she's got an extra rib and an extra loin and extra bacon. And uh, the Poland Chinas are a short and stumpy sort of. So she's got really good shoulders and hams on her as well. This is why I like this breed. And I uh, know we're not going to move a boar in. Uh, we're not going to have any kind of. Uh, any kind of dude hogs hanging around. I'm not taking her anywhere. We are going to inseminate her. Uh, I have a friend who uh, is a veterinarian who is going to come this fall and help us with the insemination process so that we can make sure we do it right and get her done, so to speak. Uh, she's going to be uh, two, I think she's two and a half right now. This will be her third winter and she's going to be in her, you know, in a really prime breeding age. So that is the plan for pork chop. And in the meantime, we'll just enjoy her having her around because she is, she's, she's fun to have. She's got a, a little section of a princess blanket. Remember guys, remember when we was, uh, when she was a little bitty and we had her in that little pen out here, uh, we had her a little pink princess blanket. Your little pink princess blanket, huh? Yeah. And uh, she's funny. She'll go and she'll dig herself a new hole to lay down in. And uh, she'll run to her old hole and pick up her little scrap of her princess blanket and uh, take it to her new hole. Now, the thing's only like this big now, but she's got to have her whoopee. Ah, yes, yeah, she does. Oh, my goodness. She needs a bath. Okay, baby. We'll see you in a little while. Well, good morning to you too, Miss Lady. Good morning. Everybody is present and accounted for on the chickens. All our hens are here. We've got everybody present and accounted for here in our pheasant run. Everybody looks happy and healthy. We're going to be switching out our pheasant bloodline this year. So these three breeding pheasants, uh, we actually have them up for sale right now. If anybody's interested in getting uh, into raising pheasants, uh, let me know. These, uh, these are still uh, in good breeding age. They're laying eggs as we speak right now. We got some in the incubator we'll show you here in a bit. And uh, they're, a, they're fun to have around. I, I enjoy them. And it adds a lot of color and a, and a lot of character to our little home place here. We've got uh, the rooster and two hens that we have for our breeding stock. What are you doing, ears? And they just are, they're just lovely. So, all right, the goats are good. And uh, let's go check on the goats. Right, there's our two goats. We got Dakota and Little Bit. Good morning, buddy. They're looking good and fat and happy, which is a good thing. How you doing, man? You guys eating up? We blew them over to here for the time being. This is our old chicken grow out pen. And uh, we moved them over to here so that they can uh, kind of graze and uh, knock down some of the weeds and clean it up a little bit. And they've been doing a good job so far. That's your job, isn't it, buddy? Isn't it, man? That's your job? Yeah, the little mobile lawnmower. Come here. Yeah, the little lawnmower. Oh, my buddy boy. Loves a good head scratching. Loves a good head scratching. I can't hardly reach you, man. So, all right. All the critters are present and accounted for. Now let's load up some fish and head to town. Yay. Everybody knows how I feel about town. There's our incubator. It's got our pheasant eggs in it. Some of the eggs we've collected over the last week or so. Uh, well, these are on day 22, but we collect them and we save them. They'll be starting to hatch probably this evening or tomorrow. They take about 23 days. And then we'll have little baby pheasants. And uh, we sell the little baby pheasants usually the day after or two days after they are hatched. They don't last very long. 
send them to a new home so the other folks can enjoy them. But they look good. We got the uh, turning tray locked so that they're not rocking, so that when they start pipping, we can uh, we can make sure that they're good and uh, put them in the brooder right away. The most important thing to do for me before I start heading into town is my coffee. Gotta have my coffee. Mm. Holy crap. That's some good coffee, and it makes me almost ready to go to town. I'm gonna have to have some more, I do believe. Oh, and of course, Mabel. Everybody's been wondering about Mabel. She's doing fine. She's still out here doing what she does, huh, girl? Yes. She's a pretty girl. Sit. Hey, sit. Sit. Good girl. Shake. No, sit. Why are you going to misbehave with the camera's on? Yeah, good girl. Just shaking my hand. Oh, yes. So, yep, Mabel's doing fine, y'all. I figured we'd give y'all a little bit of a view of part of our trip going into town. It'll probably take us close to a half an hour to get to where we're going. And, uh, we're going to Cannonsburg, Kentucky. But uh, this road used to be gravel. They paved it a couple years ago. And uh, we actually liked it better when it was gravel because it's a pretty steep hill and it's got some, you'll see the turns up here pretty quick. And in the wintertime, this road now just is terrible. It sucks. It's really hard to, to try to do anything on this road in the wintertime. Uh, in the summer it's fine, but we liked it a lot better when it was gravel because we could travel it a lot easier in the wintertime. Uh, usually in the wintertime now we got to find another way around uh, this Burlington Macedonia Ridge Road here that we're coming on to. And uh, we're on top of the uh, this ridge and we'll see if we can, uh, right up here we might be able to get a shot of the, the holler that's over on to the right there. We can see some of the hills, some of the view that we have in our neck of the woods. Not gonna guarantee that the camera's gonna pick it up great, but uh, these are the hills that we know and love. There's a lot of history up on this ridge here too. There's a good shot, we can go around the other side there. The oldest building on this place was just tore down last year and it was established in 1803 and it was called the Wolf Ridge Inn and Tavern and it sat right up here in this empty lot on the right hand side. And uh, it was way cool to see right here at this little intersection, these roads here, even though they're old country back roads to us, this intersection right here used to be the place to be because we're pretty close to the river and all the traffic back then, well, most of the traffic back then was up and down the river. So now we're getting ready to head back down through the hills again towards the river. We gotta get on the interstate, yay, and then go across into West Virginia. And then we're gonna go from West Virginia over into Kane Tuck, which is, uh, for all of you who don't speak hillbilly, that means we're West Virginia and Kentucky. <laughs> so, anywho, just a little bit of the uh, drive that we got, and we'll, uh, we'll see you here in a bit. We are crossing the river into West Virginia. Western part of Huntington, West Virginia. Got to go up here and get the old interstate. So when we cross over into Kentucky, it won't be very long here, just a couple of minutes. We'll uh, give you a quick clip of that part of Kentucky, the most you know, the eastern part of Kentucky. Beautiful country around here. We just love living out here in the hills. Well. We've been on the interstate for about five minutes. We're now crossing the Big Sandy River. That is down there. It was literally where we was fishing the other day uh, when Ricky was here with uh, Chris. Uh, Chris Souders, my buddy. And we are coming into eastern Kentucky. This will be the Ketlicksburg, Ashland area of Kentucky. We're going to go on down the interstate about another five minutes and uh, go into Cannonsburg. And then we will uh, turn the camera back on when we get to our destination in Cannonsburg. But we are now in Kane Tuck. We are here at our destination. Morning, Tom. 
This is Tom. He is the owner of TNT Tackle out here in Cannonsburg, Kentucky. And I'm not saying that this dude knows everything there is to know about fishing. I'm simply saying that this dude knows probably just about everything there is to know about fishing, especially the river. He, uh, he does a lot. And uh, he's going to be moving to a new location, but man alive, I love, I just love this store. He has got so much different kinds of gear, all different kinds of live bait. You need it for fishing the river. Tom has got it or he will get it. Look at these rods, man. God, I love that rod that I got from you, by the way. So we are going to conduct a little bit of business and we will see you guys when we are on our way to the river. All right, we're pulling in here to Rural King. This is uh, the closest feed store. A lot of times we'll get it from another place, but since we're here, we are going to get it from here. One of our finest hillbilly stores. So we'll see you as we're done. Well, we made it out of town. We are in Eastern Kentucky in Greenup County, headed for the river. We're gonna go down and try to catch some more bait fish uh, to replace the ones that we just sold. So, uh, yay, we made it out of town safe. You know what, I just, I hate driving in town. It's probably my fault because of the way that I drive, you know, doing all that crazy stuff like, you know, driving the speed limit, using your turn signals, all the stuff that they don't do in town for some reason, good Lord. Eastern Kentucky is absolutely beautiful. Same hills, different side of the river. Anyway, we've got probably a 10 minute drive now to get to the river. And uh, when we get to the river, we'll turn the camera back on and hopefully we'll be able to find some fish. We'll see. Well, we're out here at the Greener Blocks and Dams on the Ohio side. And uh, we was gonna come down here and try to catch some, uh, some bait fish, some shad or some skipjack. But uh, looking at the river, I'm not even gonna unpack my gear out of the truck. The river is not good, not good conditions. There's some dudes down here fishing, but I've been watching for a little bit. Nobody's caught anything. I don't see any bait working. Uh, I've even seen guys with nets throwing cast nets and they're not catching any bait whatsoever. So if there's no bait, there's not gonna be any other kind of fish here. The currents just aren't all that great. Uh, we need to have more current. These turbines need to be up more. They've got them listed at running at uh, 21 and we need to have them running about 27, 28, make us a good, good swift current seams to, to stack that bait up in there real good uh, and the river's still up a little bit anybody who's planning on making a trip down here for a weekend fishing trip or something to the Greenup Dam uh, I got a good buddy uh, named Big Lou he runs a channel called the Hybrid Chaser uh, he fishes a lot for a hybrid striped bass and every week he does uh, either Thursday or Friday he'll do a Greenup Dam river conditions uh, like a weekend report uh, I'll leave a link to his channel and he did a video on some of the websites that we use to look at to see how high the river is and how fast the river's running and stuff like that. I'll leave a link to uh, to that video uh, and uh, and also to his channel there so you can, if you're planning on coming down for a trip, you can check out, uh, look at his latest update video, see what the river looks like. Uh, because if you don't have the right conditions, there's just no point in coming down here. Just like I said, I'm not even going to unpack my gear because there's there's not going to be any fish in there and i can tell by the way the, the river looks and uh the difference of the currents and, and stuff like that we need big thick fast running current seams to catch the fish that we're after and uh we just don't have that so and uh when i got up this morning and left out the house i looked at the websites um but i figured since i was going to be over here on this side uh anyway delivering some bait i would swing by and just take a look at it but uh the uh the websites were correct it's not very good the river's at 23 feet it needs to be down to about 17 or so uh, to fish this area here real good. And uh, there's just some some preferences that we like. It needs to be either be way high or way low. Uh, right now it's in one of them areas in the middle where it's just not good fishing for anything at all. Uh, like I said, there's other dudes down here fishing, but uh, nobody's catching anything uh, that I've seen. And I've been down here for probably half an hour. So... We are probably just going to uh, get back in the truck and head through the house and unload some feed. It'll cut our days planned a little bit short, but uh, it happens sometimes. All you can do is all you can do. Take one last look at it. We need the river to look like it looks like over there. Those locks, we need to have these, these locks on this side uh, opened up. These gates on the dam need to, on this side need to be opened up a little bit more than that side. That's That over there is where all the fish is going to be right now on that side of the lock. So uh, 
And uh, even with a great big giant pole, you're not going to make that car far of a cast. <laughs> and you can't come up here in a boat. They don't allow you to come up here in boats anymore. So, anywho, we'll see you back at the house. All right, we are back out here at home on the creek. We got to unload our coolers and a couple hundred pounds of feed. And uh, this morning when we left, we had a cooler full of uh, bait fish that we delivered and sold. And we turned the fish into feed, essentially. We sold the fish and bought the feed. And that's kind of how we do things out here. You know, we either trade back and forth for what we need or we sell whatever it is that we have uh, for money to buy what we need. And that's, that's kind of how we get by most of the time. Uh, whether it's fish or you know furs or skins uh, firewood produce uh, all kinds of stuff that we can trade and barter and sell uh, out here to uh, to get to get by and uh, it's a good life and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way no we don't have a lot uh, we don't have fancy stuff but uh, I'm not into fancy stuff uh, and we just don't need a lot you know this is uh, I like the freedom of this kind of lifestyle so there's no Willie truck Oh, Willie, he don't like the highway. That's why we didn't take him today. The, the mutters on there. He doesn't uh, doesn't like the highway too much. But anyway, we got some stuff to unload here. And uh, the next couple of hours, I'm going to be taking care of my wife, uh, giving her a bath. I think she would need to trim her fingernails uh, and stuff like that. And we're not going to obviously videotape any of that kind of stuff. Um, and then we'll rest for a little bit and have some coffee. Uh, wait for the sun to go down a little bit because it's not super hot, but the sun is really strong. So now we'll have a, uh, uh, a few hours of rest time and uh, taking care of family time. Um, it is a little bit before noon and uh, the day is uh, not done yet, but we're going to rest and we're going to take care of the family stuff and then we're going to, uh, after we get this stuff unloaded, and then we'll get into uh, the evening stuff a little bit later and there won't be a whole lot, just mundane evening chores and uh, hoeing the garden a little bit, but we'll get a few clips here and there. Find us a spot in the shade, stay out of the sun, have us some, uh, some water. I had my coffee. I'm going to have me a little bit of water so I don't dehydrate. Uh, dehydration always gets me every summer if I'm not careful. Uh, but when we, when we was coming back uh, from the river, we stopped. We didn't have anything in the, the traps that we have set for the, uh, uh, the gentleman that we're helping with the nuisance coons. And there's also a lot of fawns now that are just a couple of days old. The, the doe deer are having their fawns right now. Uh, so we really got to be vigilant for coyotes uh, to try to uh, have them keep from killing as many of the fawns as we can. It's because those are a valuable resource uh, to us as far as uh, our livelihood goes. The, uh, the deer population and our deer herds out here, we really try to keep track of them. And plus, man, it is just horrible, horrible to watch coyotes take down and kill a uh, a little you know a little deer this it's it's a terrible experience and uh and uh, i don't wish that on anybody so we uh we've seen some fawns in the hay field uh we're gonna try to get some video if we can get some good close-ups of some little couple day old little deer they're so cute and uh we go get some more video here after a bit we're going to uh continue with our family time and uh and then a little bit of quiet time not that it's ever too noisy out here in the shade, but uh, it is what it is. So anyway, I thought I'd give you guys an update about the traps. We had a, I did some uh, coyote trapping, nuisance coyote trapping a couple of weeks ago. Uh, some, uh, one of our elders down the road, uh, some of his sheep was getting attacked and killed uh, by a pack of coyotes, so they needed to be dealt with. Normally I don't trap during the summertime, and there's a lot of traffic today. Normally I don't trap during the, in the, during the summertime unless it's an absolute necessity in these two particular calls uh, where the sheep are getting killed and uh, this other gentleman out on the outside of Ironton, uh, his baby ducks and baby chickens, the coons are, are killing them. So these, uh, these animals need to be dealt with. Uh, we'll try to live trap the coons and relocate them during the summertime. Uh, but that's what we got going on. Anyway, I forgot to give you an update about the trappings. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier or not, but uh, here's what it is. So we're going to have more uh, family time in the shade and a little bit more quiet time we'll catch up with you guys in a little while well as is often the case our quiet time is interrupted and it's a good interruption uh, another bait shop has called and needs more bait uh, so we are going to pack up his order 
uh, like I said, a skipjack and deliver it to him. Uh, we we're in the middle, you know, getting into the heat of fishing season, and uh, a lot of dudes need bait. They want to go out chasing catfish, and uh, we've got good premium bait. So we're going to load up and head to town. Like I said, it happens quite a bit. Somebody uh, wants to buy rabbits or pheasants or you know anything that we have, then uh, we'll you know we usually will deliver it to them or meet them someplace. And uh, it's just all part of uh, uh, doing what we do. So we're going to get loaded up here and get his order. And we'll see you when we get into South Point this time. We're going into South Point, Ohio, to the Tackle Box. So we'll see you in a bit. All right, we are here at the Tackle Box in South Point. Man, it's a great tackle shop. And uh, we are going back here to meet Greg. They've got all kinds of rods and reels and sinker molds and baits and Man, you name it, all kinds of stuff in here. This is a, a little bit bigger store than uh, the one we was at earlier today. So, uh, back here, I'm going to deliver the fish and do a little bit of business. This is Greg, the owner of the Tackle Box. Hello, Greg. Hi. Uh -huh. So, like I said, this is the uh, in South Point, Ohio. You can look them up on Facebook or you can uh, just look them up on uh, the internet and swing in and check them out. They've got all kinds of stuff, y'all. This is the uh, front of the tackle box is what the store looks like from the road. So next to an old family dollar that's not there anymore. But anyway, all right, headed back to the hills. Well, doing our afternoon, evening, tend the critters now. You goats, I tried to put their food in a bowl. They always dump it out and they'd rather eat it off the ground. But every evening they get a little bit of sweet feed, there's a little treat. I need to bring the hose over here and fill up their water. We haven't had any rain in a couple of days. That water bowl down there, the gutter drains off of the house. They come to the driveway, that's where it went, it comes out, and usually when it rains, it keeps their water full. But uh, I gotta get the hose out because we haven't had any rain. But Doing our evening tend to critters chores here real quick. And uh, as you can tell, everybody is so neglected. <laughs> and then uh, we got to do some hoeing in the garden. And I believe there's going to be some folks who are passing through this way that want to stop out for a quick visit. And then uh, my friend at the uh, river told me that there may be uh, some, some skipjacks running out there now. So we may have to get all this done and try to uh, try to get out there and catch some more of the bait that we sold today oh I know sweetie so the chickens a little bit of scratch they've got layer crumble in their house but you always try to give them a little bit of scratch come on pork chop pork chop come on here pork chop here well, apparently she wants the chicken scratch instead of her feet. It happens. Come on, you. What are you doing? Being a silly girl. Here. Here, silly. So, we are going to be busy, busy, busy here for the next several hours trying to get everything done. And uh, we'll, I think whenever I go up to 10 day uh, rabbits, we'll show you the rabbits up in the barn to meet rabbits. Here are our meat rabbits. Here in the meat barn. I don't know how well the light's going to be in here. But three of the four does have got letters. Handle, dude. Give a little baby. Oh, goodness. Look at that food bowl's empty, isn't it, Mama? The food bowl's got a baby in it. What's up with that? <laughs> so we're going to get everybody uh, foods topped off and check on the water. And, uh, yep. These rabbits here are just about ready to wean. These little otters. Hi, cutie pie. And man, I'll tell you what, I just love these cages that we have. They're so much easier to deal with than the uh, the wire ones. I just, I love them. So anyway, we're gonna get everybody tended to out here and uh, get along with the rest of the evening. I don't know how well this is going to come out in the camera. I don't know how well I can hold and have the camera on at the same time. But we'll give it a shot anyway. 
is cleaning up some of these weeds and this grass before they get out of control. Because we don't want out of control garden, we want happy, productive garden. And it sure does come in handy when your hoe is sharp. So every once in a while, you need to uh, get your hoe and put a file or a sharpening stone on it so that you can cut that stuff off real easy. It sure does make it a lot easier uh, when you've got a good sharp hoe. And I know that some of you out there, when I said I was coming out the hoe in the garden, you thought I was going to be like, hello, sailor. <laughs> Wrong kind of hoeing out here in the garden. <laughs> so anyway, we'll be doing this for another uh, probably 45 minutes an hour i think it's about 4 30 or so in the p.m and uh i'm gonna try to get a couple of these rows done and hoed up before we uh try to go back out and hit the river if i decide to go hit the river uh it just all depends on how the rest of the afternoon goes uh kind of play it by ear we've got some folks coming out tomorrow to pick up some rabbits We've got some folks coming out day after that to uh, pick up some pheasants. So it's uh, never the same thing, but always kind of the same thing. And uh, in between, uh, in between visits and uh, delivering rabbits and stuff like that, we'll be doing this kind of stuff. Weeding and hoeing the garden is a never ending project. It always needs to be done. And uh, of course, tending all the critters, and uh, tending tending my wife Lupita, and tending the kids, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, always a little of something going on, and that's how we like it. So, anyway, uh, we got some folks coming out before too long to do a uh, quick little swing through visit and say hello. And maybe we'll get a little bit of video of that when that happens. Man, we already got a pretty good size jalapeno right there. I like it. I like it. Looking forward to it. We need, need a good garden this year. So, all right, y'all. We'll catch up with y'all in a little bit. Did I mention mowing and trimming the grass? Uh, that's my kid's main job in the summertime is trimming and mowing. And they also help us weed uh, the gardens. I'm babying this garden personally. The other gardens, the kids will be in there. So, but yeah, I forgot to mention mowing and trimming and all that good stuff. The tractors help a lot, but we still have quite a bit of mowing and trimming to do. So, anyhow, I better stop walking or I'm going to fall. Phew, the sun is going down behind the hills now. There's my youngest son, Joshua. He's either going to go... Uh, mow and trim on part of the property or maybe rob a train or something. I don't know exactly <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's gonna rob a train not, not quite sure where the nearest train tracks are but you know <laughs> Anyway evening stuff so We'll uh, catch up with you in a little bit The goats are happy because whenever we mow and we, we cut those tall stuff down in the in the uh, in the ditch there we always gather it up and uh gather it all up and toss it into them. So they're gonna get a little treat here for too long. Well, there you have it guys. That's pretty much a typical summer day uh, around here on the home place and uh, doing some running and selling and, and stuff like that. Uh, uh, we're gonna run out of light here before too awful long. So uh, we figured we'll end this video. It's probably been extremely boring as crap and I apologize, but this is just kind of day to day what we do around here. So. Not quite sure what else to say. We're going to go in and start getting some supper going and uh, clean up a little bit and all that good evening uh, stuff and get ready to go to bed here probably around 9 o'clock and get up tomorrow and do it all over again. So I hope this wasn't too awful boring. You guys have a great rest of the day. Get outside and enjoy life. God bless. Me in. Buzz, buzz. The end.